The time has finally come. The day of reckoning is upon us. Well, that is true, but I don't need to sound so dramatic about it. Excitement is more the emotion I'm looking for, because this is the finale to my anime of the year series thingy. Ever since 2010, I have been in some shape or form rating the best anime that has come out during that year. And because I have been rating every anime from this past decade, I thought it would be a good idea to go back and make a super big list to summarize my thoughts on the whole decade. And yes, I count 2010 to 2019 a decade, because that's what a rational and sane person would recognize as a decade. But this list is not going to be a straightforward one-to-one -one for my last 10 lists. A lot of things have changed. I've gone back and watched a lot of anime that I missed last time, and I've changed my mind on what I think of older anime. So this will be a definitive list of my favorite anime of the decade. Although, I acknowledge the fact that I will always change my mind about anime, and that there will always be more anime to watch. So just take this list as a what I think about anime right now kind of list. Before we begin, I want to establish the rules, because they are a little specific. First, to be an anime of the 2010s, the show has to have aired, shown in theaters, or be released to the public in some way, shape, or form between January 1st, 2010 and December 31st, 2019. All of the anime has to have been released during that time. So this excludes series that started before that date, or series that started on that date and ended afterwards. This mostly just excludes really long ongoing shows, so it's no big deal. Next, most series will be grouped together with all of their seasons that got released in the 2010s. The two exceptions will be when one season is unique and good enough to stand on its own, then I'll just pick one season. The main example here is JoJo and Sword Art Online. However, spin-off series that are drastically different from each other will be split up and take up different spots in the list. The main example here is Index, Pokemon, and the Fate series. Take a look at the text version of this list where what series is included is written in more detail. And lastly, I'm only counting anime series and movies, so things like music videos and short OVAs are cut. But I will make exceptions for things like TV-styled anime that were released online. These rules sound pretty strict, but that is only because 100 anime only sounds like a big number. But there is so much good anime to choose from that I already had a hard time getting the number down to 100. And I'm pretty happy with the end result, and I think it will make for a great list. So without further ado, I bring you my top 100 anime of the 2010s. Number 100, Aokana, Four Rhythm Across the Blue. Starting off the list strong with a fun and unique sports anime. Aokana has all the appeal of a regular sports anime with themes of teamwork, self-improvement, and the actual fun of watching the sport itself. But what makes it stand out is the sport itself, being entirely made up for the show. So in addition to all the traditional things that make sports anime good, we also get to experience a brand new sport entirely, and all the cool things that it brings to the table. While it might be a simple show, the fun of watching a new sport be shown off and how it impacts the story is what makes the experience so worthwhile. 99. The Demon Girl Next Door This show takes the age-old tale of a hero doing battle with a demon and flips it on its head. The demon is an incompetent newbie and the hero is a retired magical girl disillusioned with the idea of fighting. This idea is core to the comedy in the series, but throughout the story, the two girls discover that they would actually make pretty good friends if not for the situation they're put in. So there's this constant push of the two girls trying to work past what is expected of them to gain a worthwhile friendship. The show's ability to have a deep, wholesome message within the context of a cute girl's comedy show is what makes it special. 98. Katanagatari If there is one thing I really love about anime, it's bizarre characters and cool sword fights, and Katanagatari delivers on this in full. Being driven by a quest to collect 12 special swords, the show uses an episodic format to deliver its story. Because of this, each episode is able to be a self-contained story about traveling to a cool place, meeting a strange character, and having a cool fight. And with its distinct art style, soundtrack, and directing, each episode feels fun and unique. There's probably a lot more to this anime that I haven't realized yet that would put it even higher on this list, but for the moment, I still think it's pretty neat. 97. Seraph of the End Some anime have good stories, some anime have good characters, and some anime just have style, and this show has style in spades. The first entry in the dumb fun category of my list is Seraph of the End. Everything from its post-apocalyptic setting to the cool glowy weapons to the edgy vampires, this show has a ton of style. So even if it's not the deepest anime or even makes sense a lot of the time, it's just so fun to see all what it has to offer that it deserves a spot on my list. It also has one of my favorite opening themes of all time. 96. Cabinary of the Iron Fortress Much like the last show, Cabinary is not a very deep show or makes the most amount of sense, 
In fact, it probably makes less sense than Seraph of the End. However, Cabaneri leans into its dumb fun aspect much harder than Seraph and embracing the rule of cool. Why is everything run by Steam? Because it makes for cool backgrounds. Why are there zombies and why do they need to be shot at point blank to be defeated? Because it makes for cool fight scenes. And so on. It also helps that we have the hype master director himself, Tetsuro Araki, to add to the cool factor of the show and help secure it a spot on the list. Number 95, Black Fox. Another dumb fun kind of anime. Black Fox leans on its core of a superhero origin story to present cool conceptual ideas and fun action scenes. While its actual plot might be even more contrived than the last two anime on the list, it has the advantage of not wasting as much of your time with it. So instead of wasting episodes at a time on its dumb plot, it only subjects you to a few minutes. This is great because it helps to mitigate the dumb parts of the experience and let you enjoy the fun parts, overall being a great time. 94. Black Bullet A super dumb and super fun anime. Black Bullet is a perfect example of why anime is so cringe and at the same time so much fun to watch. It's got an edgy plot that involves people suffering and dying, it's got insane over-the-top powers and fights, it's got a villain who's a cheap knockoff of the Joker from Batman, and to top it all off, it's full of cute lolis. It's one of those shows I can't explain to my normal friends, or even myself why I like, but when I watch it, I have a great time, and that's all that matters. 93. Zettai Karen Children, The Unlimited Hyobo Kyosuke I'm sure most anime fans have asked themselves at one point, what if the main villain from a Magical Girl show had their own show? Being a spinoff of such a show, Hyobo Kyosuke does exactly that by starring the main villain from that show. While its concept and execution are simple, if, like me, the concept interests you and you just want to see cool bad guys doing cool bad things, then this show will deliver. 92. Girls in Panzer Despite not being a lot on this list, I am a fan of the cute girls do cute things genre of anime. But what I love even more is the slight variation of cute girls do cool things, and it doesn't get much cooler than big tank battles. While being a cool enough concept on its own, what makes the tank battles even cooler is that they're surprisingly well thought out. There's a lot of time dedicated to the strategy and planning phases of the battles that goes a long way to make the fun of the battles well earned. And the framing of all this being a sport led by cute anime girls keeps the battles fun, making this a great time for both cute things fans and tank fans alike. 91. Unbreakable Machine Doll Most of the dumb fun shows in this category are in here because of their ideas are cool, but the execution of these ideas are shallow. This show is kind of the opposite. Its main goal is to just be another battle, harem, light novel, whatever. But that idea is done with a shockingly large amount of effort. This can be seen mainly in the visuals, which have a charming unique art style accompanied by satisfyingly fluid animations. The characters also add a lot to this experience, being well designed, fun to watch, and actually having good chemistry with each other. Even the English dub goes the extra mile and gives regionally appropriate accents to the characters. The main plot on its own might be a bit dumb, but just being in the world itself is so much fun that the plot could be anything and it would still be a good time. 90. The Fruit of Grisaya This series also kind of fits into the dumb fun category, but slightly less dumb than the last couple of anime. Don't get me wrong, this show has its fair share of dumb, mostly in the edginess of it all, with all the dark backstories, having to kill people, and moral ambiguity. But what ties the story together is its overall theme of learning to love yourself. Because yes, we have all done dumb, edgy things in the past, but it's our present self's choice to decide whether or not we're going to let our past mistakes define who we are now. Because of this deeper message, this series can be both dumb fun and have a deeper message at the same time, and I think that's neat. 89. SSSS Gridman Breaking free from the dumb fun anime, this show is great because it has good deeper themes. These themes mostly involving friendship, personal responsibility, and a ton of other stuff hardcore fans can sink their teeth into. It's also a huge love letter to the Tokusatsu Gridman series from the 90s. Even without seeing the original series, this relation still adds a unique flavor to the show, and its connection is used to help convey its themes. The only thing holding this back from being even higher on this list is its weak beginning that caused me to almost drop the show. But I'm glad I didn't, because it's one of the most off-kilter and interesting shows of the decade. 88. The Devil is a Part-Timer Almost everyone on planet Earth knows the feeling of having to work a crappy job and the feeling that it's beneath you, but having to do it anyway because you need the money. So what's the best way to exaggerate this bleak idea and make it into a comedy anime? By making the devil himself put his plan for world domination on hold to work a crappy job. While this premise is great by itself, the show also has really wholesome moments, with the devil being really good at his job and taking pride in it. 
Meanwhile, the hero who's tasked with defeating him is also given a crappy job, but she is less adept to handling it. This contrast between these two characters is what allows this show to communicate deeper meaning while still being hilarious. 87. Blood Blockade Battlefront Throughout the years, there have been many slice-of-life shows that aim to create a relaxing atmosphere and emulate the mundane day-to-day -day life of the characters in the show. But what this show in particular does is take that same concept, but focus on the unpredictability and insanity of what day-to-day -day life can look like and bring that to an extreme. For the crazy world, alien species, and complex human feelings and lives of the main characters, you are never quite sure what you're going to get in an episode, but you know it's going to be a wild and fun time. 86. Planet With. This show has a little bit of everything. It has the scope of Gurren Lagann, quirky humor, emotional character arcs, cool mech fights, and a ton else. There are plenty of other shows that try to do a lot and fail, but what makes this work in this show is its willingness to go 100% on everything it does. Instead of trying to do all of this at once and make a blurry mess, it goes scene by scene and fully commits to the mood, pace, and writing style for what that scene in particular calls for. All of this can lead to the show feeling disconnected in some parts, but for the most part, each transition feels seamless, and the overall bombastic attitude of the show ties everything together to make a great fun time. 85. Be the Beginning Where Planet With mixed together a billion different shows into one, Be the Beginning focuses on two. One being a detective show based around an older group of characters using logic and reason to solve a murder, while the other half follows a teenager with superpowers fighting an evil organization to save his girlfriend. While these two stories do clash with each other a lot and kind of fall apart near the end, the early and mid sections of the show have one of the most intriguing plots of the decade and definitely one of the best fight scenes of the decade. So while it's uneven in some spots, it's still worth it for the highs. 84. Chika the Coffin Princess While this list is focused on new and exciting things that the 2010s brought to the table, it's still worth acknowledging when a throwback does well, which is exactly what we have in this show. Chika the Coffin Princess takes the idea of the fantasy action-adventure genre, popular in years past, but it avoids a lot of the pitfalls of those shows by tightening up the pacing and having a more logical plot progression. It may not perfect the genre, but it has fun characters, great world building, and great fights. And even during the slow points, it still has the lovable and reaction gift generating titular character Chika to keep things entertaining. 83. The Ancient Magus Bride Speaking of great world building and characters, this show is one of the best in those regards. Its world, for example, while looking uninspired at first, has a ton of depth with monsters and creatures inspired from mythologies from all over the world, all tied together within one coherent universe. And guiding us through this magical world is the perfect set of main characters. A girl who has all but given up on the possibility of finding joy in the world, and a guy who is more than willing to show her that there is. This creates a natural setup to show off the fascinating world while at the same time creating a slightly unusual but wholesome dynamic between the two of them. This all comes together to make a fun and sweet anime. 82. Parasite Moving from sweet to creepy, we have a horror action show. While its premise of having aliens infect humans and disguise themselves as them to try to take over the world is both terrifying and cool, what really puts this show on the list is the main character's growth. At the start of the series, the main character is just a run-of-the-mill guy who just so happens to be half-infected by an incompetent alien. But throughout the series, the two of them encounter threats that force them to toughen up and learn to work together to survive. So while not every beat of the show works out perfectly, I am a sucker for natural character growth. So it gets a spot on the list. 81. Dokusei Officially starting the wholesome romance section of my list, we have the short and sweet Dokusei movie. This movie manages to tell a complete love story in only an hour by keeping things simple. This movie is focused on following two people who aren't quite sure what they want out of a relationship, but are dedicated to working it out. This core idea of two people working together on their romance is what makes it so wholesome. It's also one of the best gay romance stories I've ever experienced. This is due to the film not relying on this plot point to carry the story, but rather it's treated as just another thing they have to work together to figure out. These strong themes in combination with its short length make it one of the most worthwhile experiences of the decade. 80. I can't understand what my husband is saying. For breaking away from the usual high school drama romance that is so prevalent in anime, this short series starts where most anime would end, with the main characters marrying and starting to build a life for each other. While this already makes the show one of the more interesting romance anime, what makes it so good is the dynamic between the main couple. One is a hardcore otaku and the other is a relatively normal girl. But the core emotions that they have for each other are so strong that these personality differences seem small in comparison. 
This leads to plenty of wholesome moments of the two working together to get past these differences. This wholesomeness, mixed with great comedy and its three minute episodes, adds up to one of the best short and sweet romance stories of the decade. 79. One Week Friends The next wholesome romance anime we have is One Week Friends. A reason I'm extra critical on high school drama romance shows is because most of the time the drama feels forced and avoidable. But this show circumvents this issue by putting the main source of drama outside of the character's control. That being that the girl loses her memories after every week. Outside of this issue, there's no reason the two main characters would not get together, and it's something they both want. So instead of wasting time fighting with their own emotions, they have an outside force that they can come together to overcome. This makes them easy to root for, further establishing the relationship and making the show a great watch. 78. Momokuri Speaking of natural conflict in a relationship, it's super understandable to run into problems in a relationship when one person is kind of a weirdo. The main girl starts the story by confessing her feelings to the guy who she had been stalking. But the guy on the other hand just wants a normal relationship. It's this dynamic of wanting different things out of the relationship that causes the drama in the show. But at the end of the day, they both want the same thing and want to be in a relationship with each other. So the show is really about the characters understanding the differences between them and coming to accept and love each other for the weirdos that they are. And if that isn't wholesome, I don't know what is. 77. San Karea San Karea is a good example of using gimmicks and metaphors to enhance an already great story. At its core, it's about two people who better each other and improve their lives by being in a relationship. But what sets the show apart is that the main girl is a zombie. Conceptually, this is a cool idea, and the series leans into this and shows what it's like to have a zombie girlfriend. But it also uses being a zombie as a metaphor in order to more easily talk about themes like getting through abuse and emotional trauma. So it's able to walk this very thin line of being really cool and really emotional to be an overall great show. 76. Suki ga kirei The last three romance shows all used gimmicks in their execution, and I do appreciate that, as unique gimmicks are part of what makes anime fun to watch. But another reason anime is fun to watch is because it can also emphasize the emotions of a more grounded story. The main thing that makes Tsukigakire great is that it's an overall well-written romance story. However, this great story is enhanced by the art style, directing tricks, and other elements that would not be possible in any other medium. So while you could make this story work in other mediums, it would give off a slightly different emotion and probably end up not being as great of an experience as it stands now. 75. Gakko Garashi Breaking from romance into horror, we have Gakko Kurashi. During the early 2000s, the Slice of Life style of series came into popularity due to their comforting and relaxing atmosphere. And this show does have scenes that on the surface emulate that. However, it's undercut by the fact that it's set during a zombie apocalypse. The characters pretend that everything is fine and try to have a nice and relaxing time, but everything is not fine. Zombies could break down their barricade at any moment and kill them all. And the show is not afraid to remind you of this. So the true horror doesn't come from the gruesome or violent scenes, but from turning something familiar that should be comforting and relaxing into something unnerving and scary, making it one of the most unique horror anime of all time. 74. ReZero ReZero takes the saying of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger to its logical extreme by having the main character who literally cannot be killed. Every time our hero dies, he's taken back in time and tasked to reflect on his mistakes and try again. So theoretically, the only thing stopping him from achieving his goals and making everyone around him happy is his own mental fortitude. And trust me, that mental fortitude is pushed to its extreme. But as long as he isn't dead, he can always learn something from his mistakes and try again. This theme in combination with fun characters makes for an entertaining and inspiring story. 73. Sword Art Online Season 2 Mother's Rosary Arc Sword Art Online has a lot of wasted potential. Its premise alone is cool enough to inspire a near-infinite number of copycats, but its actual execution on that premise leaves a lot to be desired. This is mostly due to the fault of lazy character writing and incoherent world building. But for some reason, this all goes away for this one arc at the end of Season 2. This arc pushes its Mary Sue protagonist to the sidelines and puts a greater focus on the interaction between the game world and real life. And it does all of this to tell an incredibly emotional story about living life without regrets. So while I don't think the rest of Sword Art Online is as bad as everyone says, this one arc proves it could be so much more. 72. A Certain Scientific Accelerator Being a spinoff of a much larger series, Accelerator does a pretty good job of standing on its own. Its dumb fun characters, cool powers, and insane storyline would already guarantee it a spot on the dumb fun section of this list. 
but its connection to the rest of the Index Universe is what makes it so interesting. If you're already familiar with the setting, characters, and power system, then the things the show adds to that become all the more interesting. So it's able to all at once be a fun standalone show, an intriguing introduction to the Index series, and fan service to existing Index nerds. So even if it can't reach the highs of the rest of the series, it's still a fun time that anyone can enjoy. 71. Problem children are coming from another world, aren't they? This is another show that should be in the dumb fun category. Most of the appeal of the show is its cast of overpowered protagonists having insane fights and its snarky humor. But what makes the show work so well is its willingness to fully embrace the concept of dumb fun and just how snarky the humor gets, often being metatextual and aimed at itself. All of this gives the show a tongue-in-cheek vibe to it, making watching it breezy and fun. The only thing holding the show back is the fact that it's straight up outclassed by another show, higher up on this list, that does the whole meta-humor and overpowered protagonist better. But this show is still a great time on its own. 70. The Idol Master. I'm sorry, I couldn't go this entire list without including at least one idol show. And idol groups are infamous for good reason. They are mostly based around cramming as many cute designs and personalities into something as possible, hoping that you will like at least one of them to put up with the rest. Idolmaster, on the other hand, does not play these games. Every single character in the group is amazing. Because of this, as the show went through each of its episodes focusing on a different member, I never felt like I was biding my time to get to the good part, because everyone was great and well written. Even more impressive is that all of these varying personalities have good chemistry together, so even group shots are fun to watch. All of this combined with a solid mainline story makes Idolmaster the complete package. 69. Ground Control to Psychoelectric Girl On the surface, this show just looks like any other high school rom-com, but despite being that for the most part, this show has a lot of strange quirks to it. The most notable thing being the main characters, a guy who just wants to have a normal, fulfilling high school life, and a girl who thinks she's a space alien. This contrast already provides an interesting story by itself, but it's emphasized by its strange directing. Done by the famous Akiyuki Shimbo, the directing of the show is the type that breaks conventions and brings attention to itself. However, all the decisions made in that aspect are done to bring out the emotions of each scene into focus, letting you really feel each one. So while on premise the show is not much, its out there characters and director make it one of the most memorable of the decade. 68. Cells at Work Moving on to the great comedy section of my list, we have a wacky workplace comedy. What I enjoy about comedy anime so much is its ability to do multiple things at once. For example, while the main appeal of the show are the fun characters and silly plot lines, what really puts it on a list like this is that it's actually really educational, by having the entire world be a personification of the systems of the human body. In one episode, we follow a red blood cell in the form of a cute girl trying to learn the ropes of her new job, while simultaneously learning how these cells deliver blood throughout the body. In doing this, the comedy is able to make the boring biology facts interesting, while at the same time the serious biology elements make the wacky comedy scenes funnier, adding up to a great show. 67. Haven't you heard? I'm Sakamoto. Sakamoto is the embodiment of cool. It's not that nothing uncool happens to him, because regardless of what you do, that is inevitable. Rather, what makes Sakamoto cool is that the way he does everything is cool. Whether it's being bullied at school or working a part-time job, he approaches everything with extreme elegance. A serious character in silly situations is already a great time enough, but the real enjoyment in the series is the secret to his power, a lack of shame. By not fearing embarrassment and fully committing to everything he does, regardless of the outcome, everything he does looks intentional and cool. This simple solution to a problem that everyone has makes this show both super funny and super motivational. 66. Amagi Brilliant Park Slightly less complex than the previous two shows, Brilliant Park mostly gets by via its core premise, of forcing an arrogant jackass to work together with silly anime characters to revitalize an amusement park. But it's the show's finesse and complexity in handling all these elements that make it great, through layered character personality, complex plot lines, and an insane magical world most scenes would, by all accounts, be incomprehensible. But the pure amount of effort and care that goes into each shot makes everything come together perfectly. There's a reason that Kyoto Animation, the studio behind the show, is known for their passion and detail in their work. And this show will most certainly not be the last one on this list made by them. 65. Please Tell Me Gaoko-chan Similar to Cells at Work and Sakamoto, what makes Gaoko so great is its ability to use its central gimmick both as a joke and a way to talk about larger ideas. 
On the surface, everyone in the show just looks like a stereotypical personality type. Take the titular character Galco, who comes off as a typical hot girl who's only interested in boys and makeup. But as we go through the series, we find that she's actually a pretty innocent and friendly person. While this idea of a character doing something unexpected is mainly used for comedy, it also makes the characters feel real and layered, reminding us that in real life, people are much more complex than they first appear. This wholesome message combined with the show's great comedy and short length make it easily one of the most worthwhile shows of the decade. 64, Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. The main appeal of this show is obviously its insane sense of sexual humor, being one of the most insane not just in the decade, but in anime in general. But what brings these jokes beyond just being a funny meme is the goal of these jokes in the first place. To be educational! As the name would imply, the world of the show is one where censorship has gone so far that the people in it barely know what a sex is, and it's up to the pervert terrorist main characters to bring this knowledge back to the people. While this is obviously social commentary on our own society, Something that makes the show extra funny is that the show itself was censored during its initial airing, thus proving that the world we live in now is not that far off from the show's world. This makes the jokes and the message of the show all the funnier and more impactful. 63. Nichijo. Going back to light, simple fun, Kyoto Animation is back on the list with Nichijo. While most other comedy shows on the list are great for being multi-layered, Nichijo just takes chaotic meme energy and pushes it to its extreme. From the eccentric characters, to the insane scenarios, and the silly animation, all of the show's elements help support the insane chaos of the series. All of this is beautifully tied together by the love and care that the studio behind it is famous for, adding up to make one of the simplest shows of the decade, but also one of the most enjoyable. 62. Teasing Master Takagi-san Another simple and great show to end off the comedy section of this list. This one might be cheating because it's also a great wholesome romance anime at the same time, because of how most of the jokes get delivered for the main couple trying to out-prank each other. While this seems like it gets stale fast, what makes this 24-episode journey worth it is the subtle romance plot being developed in the background of all these jokes. So while you're in the middle of laughing at the many jokes, you're also rooting for them to get together, making this show an expert blend of the two genres. 61. Data Live as I've talked about before, I do love shows that are able to excel in one or two categories, such as dumb fun, romance, or comedy. However, why those groups are on such a low position on the list is because the anime above them are just that much more complex. Data Live is a perfect example of this. It uses its harem concept, but rather than relying on character design and fan service alone, it gives greater focus to the relationship of the characters and the severity of the plot. By doing this, it can be dumb fun, romance, comedy, and even more all in one package. So even if it's a bit clumsy at times putting all this together, it definitely has plenty to enjoy about it. 60. Space Patrol Luluko Speaking of doing a lot of things at once, we have the ambitious and high-energy studio Trigger bringing us Space Patrol Luluko. It's somehow a dumb fun, a sweet romance, and a great comedy show all at once. But despite all of this, the core emotions of the story aren't super complex. They're just given so much impact by the rest of this insane show that the simple and dumb emotions portrayed feel like the most important thing in the universe. This show is able to have the emotional weight of an ambitious 24 episode show crammed inside 13 half length episodes. An impressive feat, guaranteeing it a spot on the list. 59. Mysteria Friends the show is magical in just how many complex emotions it can convey, all while being under a warm and comforting blanket. The characters in the show, for example, are so kind and understanding that even when conflict does pop up in the show, it never becomes full-on drama or fighting. Rather, the characters acknowledge that most of the conflict arises out of misunderstanding, and the goal of the interaction is to figure out where the gaps in understanding are missing. By taking this approach to its storylines, the show is able to have a wide breadth of different emotions, while primarily being peaceful. So if you want a peaceful and relaxing show to watch, Mysteria Friends is one of the best. 58. Knights of Sidonia. Moving from one cool atmosphere show to another, we have a rad as heck space show. This show is definitely a bit all over the place, being a post-apocalyptic space opera mecha and romance anime. However, the unique sci-fi world and how all of its different elements support each other is what makes this show beautifully come together more often than not. It's also supported by being fully 3D CGI. While this makes the characters look a bit derpy, the insanely complex backgrounds and the fluid mech fights make it more than worth it. So while it's not a perfect show, it's a fun and unique experience I loved having. 
57. Erased. The show's plot of going back in time to prevent a murder is already a good enough idea by itself, but its focus on the emotions of the characters involved make it such a gripping narrative. Primarily the main character's personal guilt relating to that murder, making the large events in the show more grounded and personal. However, the show is often criticized for having rushed opening and ending sections compared to the manga. And while I agree with these criticisms, the opening and ending of the story are the least interesting parts of the story as a whole. So by rushing through them, the story is able to put plenty of time and focus on the best part of the show, and making it the best that it can be. So while there may be a few low points of the show, it's still overall worth it for the amazing highs it can reach. 56. Pokemon the Movie, I Choose You the first of five Pokemon anime on this list, and for good reason. The 2010s was the decade that the Pokemon anime got good. Pokemon in the 2000s wasn't particularly bad, it was just missing some of the passion and soul that made the original series so memorable. But the 2010s brought with it a serious determination to bring out the full potential that the anime has to offer. This movie is a perfect example of this, being a remake of the original series. But rather than being a straight remake, the film focuses on Ash's character development, from an overconfident jackass to a well-rounded Pokemon trainer. By condensing what was a background element over almost 300 episodes to the main drive of a single movie, it's able to be a fun time for old fans and be great on its own. 55. Is This a Zombie? This show is almost beyond describing. Its insane plot involving necromancers, vampire ninjas, and magical girls should put it in the dumb fun category. However, while most of the shows I put in that category are in there by accident, is This a Zombie is just so absolutely insane and ridiculous that the dumb is just as integral to the experience as fun. Most situations in the show are so absurd, but at the same time make logical sense in the context of the show's world, that I can't help but root for the character's success while also dying of laughter. And that's what makes this show so unique and fun. 54. Keijo. From one stupidly serious show to another, we have Keijo. If you look at this show for more than two seconds, then you know what the appeal is. Anime butt fights. But like the zombie show I just talked about, what puts Keijo so high on my list is its willingness to take its insane ideas as seriously as possible. While silly in concept, the characters in the show take their silly sport as seriously as any other athlete would take their sport. This adds real weight to the outcome of each match, and makes watching them as emotionally gripping as they are hilarious. It also helps that the anime butt fights themselves are so well choreographed that even outside their silly context, they still stand as some of the best anime fight scenes. So whether or not you want to enjoy some fan service, watch a sports anime, or just see some cool anime fights, Keijo has it all. 53. Space Dandy In general, anime is usually handled by one central creative team. Space Dandy, on the other hand, is one of the biggest anime collaborations of the decade. Each episode is handled by a different team of people in the anime industry. This is obviously cool on a meta level, but even if you don't know who any of these people are, the show is still a blast just to see how many different unique storytelling styles can be crammed into one show. All this is tied together by the genius Shinichiro Watanabe, who created the perfect base from which anything can happen all while making sense within one show. While not every episode strikes gold, there's so much cool and interesting stuff here that it's one of the most fun journeys of the decade. 52. Violet Evergarden Going from super fun and light to super sad and emotional, we have Violet Evergarden. Something I love about anime and art in general, it's its ability to convey very specific emotions that can't be conveyed with words alone. On paper, the individual stories told in the show aren't inherently sad, but it's the show around the stories that give them that emotion, from the complex personality of the characters, to the tragic world they live in, and most importantly, the medium of anime. This show delivers on that classic Kyoto animation polish in the movement, direction, music, and every other part of this show to really help the viewer feel the emotions of the story rather than simply understanding the plot. All these things working together makes this show hard to put into words, but not hard to understand on an emotional level why it's so great. 51. Snow White with the Red Hair This is another wholesome romance anime, but compared to the previous shows on this list, Snow White with the Red Hair is much more emotionally complex than just another romance show. The show's main focus is actually on the individual lives of the main characters and how being in a relationship can mutually benefit them. This may seem less romantic than the Shakespeare-style story of I love you so much I'd rather die than be apart, but to an older audience who has a lot going on in their lives, it's nice to know that relationships can do more than just make you happy, they can help improve all aspects of your life. 
This makes the show not only a great romance story, but also a motivational one about self-improvement through romance. 50. Megalobox While other shows are great for their ability to weave multiple complex ideas into one, Megalobox is great for its ability to do one thing in a complex way. The main appeal of the show is the fact that it's a great underdog story. All of the many aspects of the show all come down to supporting and adding to the main core idea of the show. Regardless of how many complex character backstories and plot lines there are in the show, they're all put in the show for the purpose of supporting that one main idea. So while me saying it's a really cool underdog story doesn't sound too complex, it is how everything comes together that makes it so great. 49. Excel World So remember back when I said that Sword Art Online had a good idea, but wasted most of its potential by not focusing on the interesting aspect of the series? Well, written by the same author, Excel World comes and fixes that up. On its surface, it has the same appeal of Sword Art Online being an escapist wish fulfillment story. However, Excel World's alternate world is inherently tied to its real one. So while the main character tries to escape to this fantasy world, the real one keeps rearing its ugly head to ruin it. This forces him to realize that it's not the world that's the issue, but rather how he interacts with it. And if he wants to fix it, he must first change himself. So while it may stumble a little bit in the execution, it is still a better time than Sword Art Online, and I'm willing to fight you on that one. 48. Demon Slayer The 2010s really saw a resurgence of classic shonen anime. This genre has always been one of the most popular, but before the 2010s, people were unsure how to best utilize this popularity. Most people just gave a popular show as many effing episodes as possible, hoping that people will like the show enough to infinitely support it. This massive length both made shonen anime really hard to get into, and their overall quality low. But during the 2010s, anime producers finally got it in their head that people care more about quality than quantity. Because of this, we're able to get great shows like Demon Slayer, which has an impactful story, great characters, and insanely fluid fight animation. With all these great elements, with no filler to get in the way, shows like Demon Slayer can not only be easy to recommend, but also one of the best shows of the decade. 47. Shakugan no Shana Season 3 the main reason the show is great is because of the whole package, which aired mostly in the last decade, but the third and final season is still notable on its own. First of all, the season focuses on world building, that up until this point had just been implied. It also gives more agency to the male protagonist, giving him a chance to get more involved and interact with the different factions in the show. This gives the show more of a political warfare plot rather than the action romp it has been up till this point. And it does all of this while still being the finale and tying up all the loose ends in the series. All this adds up to one of the most satisfying endings in a genre that doesn't have too many of them. 46. Pokemon the Movie, The Power of Us One of the most interesting things about Pokemon is the idea that the Pokemon themselves can impact almost every aspect of people's lives. Because of this, there's an almost infinite number of stories you can tell within the Pokemon universe, and the movie takes advantage of that potential. Throughout the film, we follow about half a dozen characters, each with their own unique relationship to Pokemon and the stories they have to tell. But all these stories are connected with the overall plot and themes in the movie, unifying and tying everything together. This creates a type of story that starts outwards and spirals in on itself to create a whole package. If you just like Pokemon and want to watch some fun stories about them, then it doesn't get much better than this movie. 45. Your Name Speaking of great movies, we have the blockbuster hit of 2016, Your Name. This movie is obviously great. It's got a fun and unique concept, good dynamics between the characters, and absolutely stunning art design, all wrapped into a supernatural romance story. Some people might be surprised to see your name this low, but that is only because the anime higher up on this list are just that much better in how they show off how multifaceted and uniquely appealing anime can be. However, in comparison to most other widely appealing movies, your name is still one of the greatest, earning it a spot on the list. 44. Planetarian, The Reverie of a Little Planet One of the many things I love about anime is its ability to use abstract metaphors to more easily talk about real-life philosophical issues. Our own mortality and the fundamentally futile nature of our actions are not easy things to talk about, let alone in a positive light. But when you phrase these ideas in the form of an adorable anime girl that in spite of being in a post-apocalyptic world just wants to show off her planetarium, it's hard not to think of these things more positively. In other words, you wouldn't think of denying this cute anime girl the simple pleasures in life, so why should you not do the same for yourself? All of these ideas, in this package, make the show not only pleasant to watch, but also to think about. 43. Land of the Lustrious 
Speaking of abstract metaphors, my next anime uses personified rocks to talk about self-improvement. The main character has a simple goal, to be more useful to the people around them. But what they quickly realize is that in order to achieve that goal, they must drastically change who they are. This is done in the show quite literally through having parts of their body break off in order to be replaced with something more useful, while also erasing parts of their memories. Obviously in real life, you don't need to break off your arm or erase your past to be a better person, but it can sometimes feel like that, which is the point of the show. Framing this change this extremely also raises the question of this change being worth it in the end. This, in combination with the other great parts of the show, makes it a fun ride that helps in thinking about these larger ideas. In other words, you could say that the show really rocks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to get one in. I couldn't help myself. 42. Wolf Children. Speaking of deep emotional ideas brought to life with animation, we have Wolf Children. On paper, this movie has a very simple plot, revolving around the difficulties of a single mother trying to raise children in not exactly ideal conditions. However, what gives this movie its complexity is the expert directing. The film is reserved with its use of dialogue to allow the focus to be given to cuts, subtle movement, and gorgeous use of its soundtrack. This approach allows the film to best portray its plots and themes emotionally, letting the viewer better experience the complex ups and downs of the story. So if you want a heartwarming story while appreciating good cinematography, this movie is one of the best. 41. Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica While the main draw of Madoka is the shock value of seeing these adorable magical girls suffer horribly, the thing that makes it interesting is that at its core, it's still a magical girl show. Boiled down, what happens in the show is no different from any other magical girl show, girls transforming into superheroes and using the power of friendship to defeat villains. But it's the how that makes the content of the show closer to a psychological horror than a kid's show. All of this is tied together by the combination of the bizarre director Akiyuki Shimbo and the brilliant nihilistic writer Gen Urobuchi. Madoka is still a magical girl show, but it's by far one of the most unique and effed up magical girl shows, earning it a spot on the list. 40. Attack on Titan Back in 2013, Attack on Titan exploded onto the scene, luring people in with its larger-than-life action, headed by Tetsuro Araki, and its dramatic plot twists. These intense emotions are a large part of what makes this show so fun to watch. However, what makes it still talked about almost a decade later is how these elements interact with its more fleshed-out storytelling. The show backs every epic fight scene and sudden plot twist with solid reasoning via character development and world-building. This dumb fun action backed with interesting plot progression helps emphasize both emotions of the series, making it one of the wildest rides of the decade. 39. Pokemon Origins We back with Pokemon again, this time with a series that gives fans what they want and tells a more fateful adaptation of the first game's story. The original Pokemon games have a very simple and effective plot, focusing on the childhood rivalry between two boys and their rise to the top. While this is present to some degree in the original anime, having an entire four episode series dedicated to it really helps make the main emotions of that story shine. It is also just a great Pokemon story in general, so if you like anime and or Pokemon in any way, then you can't go wrong with this short and simple series. 38. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. From one simple and effective story to another, we have the slime show. Throughout the 2010s, the isekai genre blew up and became infamous for the majority of its entries being bland and lazy. Because of this, most of the well-liked isekai anime are well-liked because they subvert expectations, going beyond the scope of the genre in the first place. This slime show, however, is great solely because it is an isekai first and foremost. Instead of relying on gimmicks to keep the show entertaining, it offers great characters, interesting world building, and steady plot progression. So while it might not be the most interesting show in the world, it is able to prove that the isekai genre is indeed great on its own, as long as you have a story that can bring out its potential. 37. Carol and Tuesday I'm always a fan when an audio-visual medium story doesn't ignore one of its core elements. On the whole, Carol and Tuesday is a story about two struggling musicians trying to make it big in the world. And it has the complex character writing and satisfying plot pacing to be a good enough story on its own. But what pulls the show this high on the list is its masterful use of music. For most plot beats or themes that the story offers, there's an accompanying music track complete with lyrics to back it up. The combination of traditional storytelling and music to tell a story gives an already great show an extra level of emotional complexity. All of this makes for a great experience not only for anime fans, but for music fans as well. 36. Panty and Stocking Anime is already an inherently self-indulgent, do-what-you-want kind of medium anyway, 
but this show just takes that idea and pushes it to a logical extreme. Both the characters in the show and the show itself, first and foremost, prioritize doing whatever feels right in the moment. This of course leads to the main characters being absolutely chaotic and hilarious to watch, but also allows the story to be many different things at the same time. From episode to episode, the show seamlessly flows between raunchy comedy, fun action, heartfelt romance, silent film, and so on. All of this is tied together by the king of chaotic energy, the director Hiroyuki Imaishi. So even if the show is a bit obnoxious at times, it stays so true to its intentions that I can't help but love it. 35. Shiro Bako While anime might be a self-indulgent medium, what makes it so great is the pure amount of passion that is put into making each show amazing. And there's no better anime at showing this off than Shiro Bako. Being primarily a documentary, its goal is to show the viewer everything that goes into making an anime. However, because it's about a fake company and a real industry, it is able to go well beyond the scope of what a regular documentary is capable of. Following the production of just one show, we are able to see all of the potential roadblocks and issues that crop up in anime creation, even if it's unlikely to happen all at once in real life. We also have a large cast of fun characters that help make the show a great story on its own. So it's not only one of the best documentaries I've seen, but also a great overall story. 34. High School of the Dead Speaking of self-indulgence that has a lot of passion put behind it, we have the most insane and enjoyable zombie apocalypse show of all time. Being led by the hype master himself Tetsuro Araki, it's no surprise that the main appeal of this show are the action scenes. However, the raunchier aspects of the show are often viewed as not fitting in. This is baffling to me because the whole point of an apocalypse story is to show how it causes society to break down, including the social norms of holding back our base instincts. This includes both violence and sex. This show proves that it is well aware of that by blending both of these aspects together harmoniously. Because of all of this, High School of the Dead is able to be a fundamentally great zombie apocalypse anime while staying true to the core themes of the genre. 33. Yuri on Ice In addition to indulging in a passion, another thing anime is great at is sharing your passion with others, and Yuri on Ice is the perfect example of this. Throughout the many different elements in this show, it's proven that the creators are not just huge figure skating nerds, but also that they understand what makes the sport so interesting in the first place. Before watching this, I had zero knowledge or interest in figure skating. However, for the detailed explanation of the rules, the interconnecting storylines of the skaters, and the beautiful animation, I not only learned both about the sport in general, but also how to appreciate it. You top all of this off with everything else that makes sports anime great, and you have a truly special show. 32. Beastars Next up is the bizarre and unique Beastars. Being a CGI show about animal people doesn't sound like it adds up to much, but the magic comes in how these elements are combined with overall great storytelling. The CGI is not done out of laziness, but rather it's utilized to give the show dramatic camera work that would not be feasible in 2D. Likewise, the reason the show stars animal people is to be used as a metaphor for real human issues, and it does all this to support a great coming-of-age drama story. So while Beastars might be a pretty out there show, it's also one of the best. 31. Love, Chinibio, and Other Delusions Kyoto Animation back on the list again, this time trying their hand at romance. This anime is just overall fantastic. Great characters, lighthearted atmosphere, natural conflict in the relationship, and so on. But what puts it so much higher up on this list compared to all the other wholesome romance anime is the pure amount of love and effort that went into every aspect of this show. There's so much detail given to the environments, character movements, and the flow that each scene has. This gives the entire show a very complex and grounded feeling, on top of being a super hyper-emotional anime. Having complex emotions is very important to a show based around the very complex feeling of love. Its willingness to go the extra mile in portraying these emotions makes this anime one of the best wholesome romance anime I saw all decade. 30. Fake Clade Liner Oath Under Snow being a movie of a spin-off of the Fate series, it might sound strange to see it having a unique spot on the list. But rather than build to the overall plot of the series as a whole, the film focuses on the backstory of one minor character, Emiya. Emiya's struggle of balancing his ideals and what is actually possible has always made him interesting. But throughout many different cluttered adaptations, that story has never been able to shine in anime. That is before we got this movie, which is entirely dedicated to him. So despite the fact that it's a prequel to a spin-off series, this movie gives us one of the best interpretations of one of the best stories that Fate has to offer, making it a great time for existing fans and newcomers alike. 29. Monster Musume 
Going from one strange pick to another, we have a Monster Girl Harem! The harem genre has been justly criticized for its poorly justified central gimmick. This show, however, goes above and beyond in giving an explanation. In the world of the show, Monster Girls are a strange new thing to most people, causing a lot of uncertainty and fear. Because of this, the girls in the show are ostracized simply for being who they are. The main dude, on the other hand, is super into the idea of Monster Girls, and thus can appreciate the monster traits of the girls as just another aspect of who they are. This lets the girls in the show feel loved not in spite of what they are, but because of who they are. This wholesome message emphasizes every other aspect of the show, because you know that the feelings in it are genuine, making the show the best harem show of the decade by a large margin. 28. Horo Musuko Growing up and trying to figure out who you are and your place in the world is hard enough already, but this show adds an extra level on top of that in dealing with gender identity. And this show definitely delivers on that front, with all the complexities and emotional trauma that comes with these issues. But what makes Horo Musuko so great is that it doesn't portray these themes in a purely negative light. It has an overall message that, regardless of how complicated these issues are, there are people who will understand and there is a way to work through them and be happy. This makes Horo Musuko not only a great anime, but also one of the most nuanced transgender stories of all time. 27. The Wind Rises it says a lot that even one of the worst Hayao Miyazaki movies is this high on the list. The Wind Rises doesn't have many of the striking core themes or stunning set pieces that the director is famous for, but it makes up for this in its complex themes. The film is a historical period piece following a guy who just wants to design planes to make people happy, but ends up getting involved in World War II. And the film is great as a period piece, showing the complex social and personal issues that war brings out. But this film can also be analyzed in many other ways like viewing it as an allegory for Miyazaki's desire to create good anime being interfered with by the wants and needs of the world around him. Or it's something like that. Regardless of how you interpret The Wind Rises, it's a great film with plenty for people to analyze and discuss. 26. Fate Clayed Liner Prisma Elia. Anyone who knows anything about the show is well aware of how divisive it is. Its unconventional sense of humor and its complex connection to the mainline fate canon definitely doesn't make this a show for everyone, or even most people for that matter. But for the people who this show does appeal to, it has a lot to offer. In addition to its polarizing elements, it also has some of the best fights in anime history, and an overall great plot revolving around magical girls and the power of friendship. All these elements are put in place in spite of how little sense they make, in order to best push forward the core emotions of the series. So even if this anime isn't logically sound in the slightest, it has so much emotional weight behind it that for people who it does resonate with, it makes it one of the best of the decade. 25. Princess Principle Most anime is limited in some way due to being an adaptation of another medium. It is interesting to see the creative steps taken to translate one medium to another, and done right, it can make something great that can stand on its own. But it's nice to see what anime is capable of when it lets loose and takes full advantage of what it is, and Princess Principle is a perfect example of that. Things like the action scenes, the nonlinear storytelling, and backgrounds are all things that would not be logical to do in other mediums. But through anime, not only do these things work out, but they also help to keep each individual episode and the series as a whole entertaining. Because of this, Princess Principle ends up being a great experience even without any source material backing it up. 24. Flip Flappers Remember all the things I just said about the benefits of an original anime? All that also applies to Flip Flappers, but even more so because of its focus on unique art styles and animation for its episodic storytelling. But unlike the previous episodic stories I talked about, Flip Flappers has an overall goal in its storytelling that makes the sum of its parts greater than the whole. By putting the characters in many different types of stories, we are able to see how they react under different situations. By the end of the series, we've seen so many aspects of their personalities that they end up feeling very complex and human. So in addition to being unique and fun, these individual stories add up to create an interesting amount of depth to the characters and storytelling. 23. Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works Fate is back on the list once again, and for good reason. The core ideas of Fate are fundamentally appealing. It takes super-powered versions of people from history and has them fighting in a big battle royale, giving everything a crossover fighting game kind of feel. However, the reason that all the Fate shows that aired this year are either not on the list or very high on the list is because that idea is so powerful, but very easy to mess up. A lot of Fate shows try to put a unique spin on the concept that ends up straying away from the appeal of the series. Unlimited Blade Works, on the other hand, keeps things simple and focuses on what makes the series so fun. Big anime fights between characters with distinct backstories, leading to the most definitive Fate stories of the decade. 
22, Made in Abyss. Most of the stories on this list are great for being able to weave many different elements together to support each other and make the show great on a whole. Made in Abyss has a lot of aspects to its story, but they're all solely dedicated to answering one question. What is in this big hole? And the show makes answering this question endlessly satisfying. Every plot twist adds to the mystery of the hole, every bit of character development is to give them more reason to travel deeper into the hole, every cool background and fight scene makes going into the hole a worthwhile experience, and so on. The show's central gimmick and execution is able to tap into a childlike wonder of discovery and exploration. So while the show doesn't look too complex from the surface, its core emotions make it immensely enjoyable and gives the show a lot of depth. Depth, get it? Huh? Number 21, Plastic Memories. Going from one powerful emotion to another, we have a tragically sad love story. Plastic Memories is not only good because it makes people cry. That's relatively easy most of the time. A truly sad story is sad because the struggles of the characters can reflect the viewer's own shortcomings and insecurities. This show's core message of nothing lasting forever, so you have to cherish things while they last, made me realize all the times in my own life where I had taken something for granted. Anime, and fiction in general, inherently provides a safe place that allows people to not only feel the emotions they keep in check most of the time, but also work through to try to understand them better to improve themselves. So when I say that this anime made me cry, it was both out of the sadness of the show and the joy and the hope that things can get better. In doing all of this, Plastic Memories is able to provide a deep, complex emotional experience. Number 20, No Game, No Life. This was the show I was talking about earlier that does the whole meta humor and overpowered protagonist even better than Problem Children. What makes this show great is that it takes the idea of the isekai and an overpowered protagonist to such an extreme degree, it becomes a hilarious parody of the genre. But what makes the show outstanding is that while being the best parody of the genre, it's also the best show in the genre itself. Because it's willing to admit the ridiculous nature of the situation, the show is able to fully embrace it without any shame and takes full advantage of what makes this genre so fun in the first place. At the end of the day, No Game No Life does what most other isekai shows do, just with a much better attitude. Whether you love or hate isekai, this show is a great time. 19. Madaka Box Another one in my category of parody that's also the best in its genre, we have the meta commentary shown in Madaka Box. Shonen as a genre is great for having many complex elements and overall powerful emotions, and this show delivers on this while also questioning the purpose of it all. Season 1 starts out as a relatively slow episodic story to establish the world and characters. That is, until a sudden and intense fight at the end recontextualizes everything we learned up to that point. Then Season 2 follows suit by ramping up the intensity, introducing even more insane characters with even more insane powers, adding layer after layer to the world and characters, that by the end of it it barely feels like the same show. It's just unfortunate that the anime ends just as it's getting next level good. But if the worst thing I can say about a show is that there's not enough of it, it has to be pretty good, right? Number 18, The World God Only Knows. The last and best show that's in this meta parody genre, this time with visual novel style romance. This show benefits a lot from its premise, having an otaku dating sim expert tasked with saving spirit possessed girls by having them fall in love with him. The main character approaching real relationships in the same way he would video games and failing leads to the show's parody aspect, but the actually good romance show comes in when he realizes his failings and takes the relationship seriously. But what really makes the show next level is the emotional development of the main character. While the girls don't remember the events after they're done, the main character does, and over the course of the series we get to see how this greatly one-sided emotional investment affects him. So on top of being both a great parody and a great romance show, it also combines these elements together to make a great overall story. 17. Angel Beats We're back to sad shows again! Angel Beats is similar to Plastic Memories in how it talks about the transient nature of the world. However, Angel Beats uses dramatic tone shifts to convey the pure chaotic back and forth nature of real life. In the span of one episode, you could be laughing along with the silly characters and situations that they put themselves in, and then in the next scene be bawling your eyes out. And it's only able to get away with this because both the happy scenes and the sad ones are so great on their own. But it's through the combination of these two elements that brings out the intensity of their emotions, making this one of the wildest emotional roller coasters of the decade. 16. Cube Cursed Curious Okay listen, every other show on this list I'm willing to argue and defend its merits and spot on the list. This show however, I'm willing to admit, is just really bad. Its characters and plot don't make sense, and it doesn't have any complex themes. 
but the aesthetics appeal to me on such a fundamental level, I can't help but love it. All the things from the bright poppy colors on a dark background, to the character design of cute girl with a really big and cool sword, it's just how I want every anime to look. All of this, in addition to the dumb edgy plot with goofy over-the-top anime characters, gives this show an overall feeling that resonates with me on a deep level. So while it might be an overall bad story, it's a show I wouldn't mind rewatching every day until I die. Number 15, My Hero Academia. Going back to actually good shows, we have one of the best shonen of all time. What makes shonen so great is its ability to incorporate a lot of complex storytelling tools into one story. There's no other genre that's able to mix together complex world building, character interactions, power systems, cool fights, themes of self-improvement, and overall powerful emotions in the way that a good old action shonen is able to. And Hero Academia knows this and uses the quality over quantity mentality to combine all of this into some truly outstanding stories. The best example being the tournament arc, which has every single one of these things and accumulates in one of the best fights of all time. So while it might not be too unique, it still has everything that one of the best genres in anime has to offer. Number 14, A Certain Scientific Railgun S. It's no secret to anyone that I'm a huge fan of the Index Universe, and a large reason for that is the complex and interconnected world that the story takes place in. The second season of Railgun is a perfect example of this. By covering the same arc from the main Index series, but from a different character's perspective, Railgun S adds a new level of complexity on top of an already great story. Misaka was just a side character in the Index version of the arc, but in Railgun we find out just how much she was involved with the plotline of that arc. On top of being a good standalone story with its own unique themes, when we get to the end of the arc where these two stories merge together, the added context from both sides makes the finale that much more impactful. This creative storytelling in combination with everything else that makes the Index series great allows Railgun S to be one of the most intriguing anime of the decade. Number 13, Pokemon X and Y. The main appeal of the Pokemon series is inherently fantastic. It's a story about going on an adventure, befriending cool and unique creatures, and working with them to become the best of the best. The original series is great on its own right, but how easily it gets distracted to have a side story holds it back from taking full advantage of its premise. This is where X and Y comes in, which not only cleans up the base concept, but puts extra focus on it to bring out its full potential. While it still has its fair share of fun side stories, they're kept as that, side stories. This gives the main plot plenty of time to breathe. Because of this, every roadblock, fun battle, and interesting interactions between Pokemon and people are all able to bring out what makes Pokemon so innately cool. This adds up to make not only one of the best Pokemon anime, but also one of the best action-adventure anime in the decade. Number 12, Assassination Classroom. While I love well-balanced shonen stories, what I love even more is when one series is able to focus on one or two aspects of a story and make them the best it can be. The main thing that is great about Assassination Classroom are the characters. Throughout its 47 episode runtime, every single character in the series is able to have their moment in the spotlight to develop their character. In addition to the characters themselves, there's also a lot of time dedicated to developing the relationships between all of them. This is all topped off by their amazing teacher, Kuro-sensei. Kuro-sensei is not only one of the best comic relief characters of all time, but he's able to do this while also being an amazing teacher in his own right. He is able to approach each of his students on their own terms to help them achieve their goals and foster all the development the series is great for. All these elements help to keep the character development of the series grounded and complex, all while being inside of a light-hearted and fun anime, making Assassination Classroom one of the best of the decade. Number 11, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Season 1. Being the last proper shonen on the list, we have the granddaddy of all shonen, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's not surprising to anyone that JoJo is this high on the list. Its stunning imagery, characters, and plot all set the groundwork for modern shonen. But what really sold me on the series is the 2012 anime adaptation of the first two parts. Seeing this old story brought to life with the powers of modern anime helped me appreciate an already great story. I also appreciate the series on a more meta level. From having both part 1 and 2 in a single anime, you see the ideas that the author was playing around with in part 1 be developed and come into their own in part 2. The best example of this is in the fights. In part 1, most of the fights tried to have a lot of tension, but were undercut by the hero's power giving them easy wins. The hero in part 2 on the other hand is drastically underpowered. This makes every fight tense and exciting as you watch the hero try to use their quick wits and planning to outsmart the villain rather than overpower them. So Jojo is not only a neat anime history lesson, but also has some of the best storytelling and fights in anime history, well earning it a spot on the list. Number 10, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Officially starting off the top 10, we have one of the most wholesome anime of all time. 
The show is so good at having its characters be so nice and are always able to find the best case scenario that it's almost unbelievable. But what makes the story feel grounded is that it's not afraid to have conflict or consider the fact that things might not go as planned. However, the characters understand each other on such a deep and emotional level that no matter what trouble they find themselves in, they know that they can work together to get past it. All of this greatness is dialed up to a million thanks to Kyoto Animation, who filled every single frame with as much loving care and detail as they possibly could. All of this makes for not only one of the best anime of all time, but also a nice reminder that no matter how awful and terrible the world can feel sometimes, that at the end of the day, there is good in it, as long as we know where to look. Number 9, Psychopaths. On the surface, Psychopaths looks to be another grim dystopian sci-fi story. It has all the makings for one, being set in a world where people's lives are controlled by computers, calculating what would make them the happiest. But what makes the show stand out is that it portrays a world where this actually works out great. Most of the time, the computer is right and allows people to live happy and fulfilling lives. The few exceptions and processing power needed to make this work is what gives the story such a cool plot. But because of its unique world, it avoids being just another vapid story about taking down a corrupt system. Instead, the characters understand that the system is making people happy and aim to work with it to iron out the kinks. This, in combination with Gen Urobuchi's writing, makes Psychopaths not only a great anime, but also one of the most nuanced sci-fi stories ever told. Number 8, Little Busters. Everything I said about the benefits and appeal of sad stories applies extra hard for Little Busters. While shows like Plastic Memories or Angel Beats tell one great emotional story, this anime uses several arcs of the story to tell multiple. Through its large cast of lovable and complex characters, this show is able to have stories relating to a vast variety of social, personal, and philosophical themes. These individual stories are amazing on their own, but they all have a greater unifying message behind them. All the sad and emotional stories that get played out are because a character wants to help someone, and it's through viewing the story as a whole that we can see the complexities of trying to help the people who are closest to you. So while it might be lacking a bit on the production level and the complexity of these stories, there's so much great and personal emotions on display in this one show that I can't help but give it the number 8 spot. Number 7, Fate Zero. Speaking of taking an already great concept and making it even better, we have Fate Zero. Fate Zero has all the fundamental appeal of Fate that I talked about earlier, with its unique characters and battle royale elements. However, it takes this fun and silly concept and gives it a brutal and nihilistic edge. Being a prequel, the tragic and brutal ending of the series is unavoidable. However, the characters in the story fight against this fate with every fiber of their being, and in doing so, are able to find peace before eventually succumbing to it. In doing this, they realize that regardless of how ultimately meaningless everything you do is, you can still find meaning on a personal level. And of course, this is all backed up by the king of nihilism himself, Gen Urobuchi. All of this is able to turn fate into an epic Greek-style tragedy, which, on top of being cool in itself, makes Fate Zero one of the most unique anime of all time. Number 6, Mob Psycho 100. The best shonen on this list, kind of by not being a shonen, is Mob Psycho 100. What makes this show good is that it takes everything that makes shonen great and appropriately turns it up to 100. With a combination of cool powers and some of the most breathtaking animation in the medium, the fights in the show are some of the best anime has to offer. But what really makes the show one of the best of all time is how it incorporates more human aspects into the shonen story. For example, the main character, while being one of the most powerful in the show, acknowledges that his powers don't make him special. Because of this, he focuses on improving other aspects of his character. By giving slightly less focus on the superpowers of the story, the show is able to tell much more nuanced and deeper emotional stories. So by slightly deviating from the formula, Mob Psycho 100 is able to bring out the core emotions of the genre and be one of the best shonen series of all time. Number 5, Kill a Kill. Topping off the top 5, we have one of the most insane and high energy shows of all time, Kill a Kill. If Space Patrol Lulico was a 24 episode show crammed into 13, then Kill a Kill feels like a thousand episode series in 24. Because of this, it's almost impossible to know where to start talking about this show. The cool fights and powers are dumb fun, the inventive animation and directing makes it cool to look at, the meta elements make it kind of a shonen parody, and it even has parallels to Japanese history. There are just so many layers to this show and ways that it can be appreciated, it's ridiculous. Even years after being released, people are still discussing different elements of what makes the show great. So no matter what kind of anime you like or how many times you rewatch the show, Kill a Kill proves time and time again that it's an endless wellspring of entertainment, easily putting it on the top 5 anime of the decade. Number 4, A Certain Magical Index Season 2. 
If there's one series that's even more complicated than Kill la Kill, it has to be the Index series. From its three main characters, to the interconnected world, to the crazy but grounded magic systems, this series has more stuff in it than most people can even understand. But what makes Index so fun to experience is in seeing how all these things come together. Season 2 of A Certain Magical Index is a perfect example of this. The first parts of the season are mini-arcs to develop the individual aspects of the world and characters. This all culminates during the finale, when all this comes together in one huge crossover event, making for one of the coolest arcs in anime. So regardless of how exponentially complex Index is, how the series presents its world and how it all comes together is also what makes Index exponentially more fun as you watch. So even by season 2, it becomes one of my favorite shows of all time. Number 3, Pokemon Sun and Moon. So remember when I talked about X and Y and how that series was able to tell a full and fulfilling character arc around Ash's journey to the top? Well, take the core emotionally satisfying story of that show and multiply it by 6, and then you get Pokemon Sun and Moon. With all the many unique ways that Pokemon can be interacted with, it almost feels like a waste to focus purely on the battling aspect of them. For example, you can make a cooking show, you could tell a sad emotional story, you could have a silly comedy, and so on. Sun and Moon takes full advantage of its massive episode count to get as many stories out of the Pokemon world as it possibly can. This is topped off by one of the greatest and most lovable set of main characters of all time, each on their own unique journey within the Pokemon universe. So on top of having some of the best stories Pokemon has to offer, it all comes together to make a truly outstanding anime. Number 2, March Comes In Like a Lion. There's a difference between an emotional story and an emotional experience. Stories exist in a flow of build-up and payoff, whether that be the setup to a punchline or build-up to a sad scene. March Comes In Like a Lion doesn't just make me laugh or just make me cry. I watched the entirety of this series with tears in my eyes while feeling every single emotion I didn't even know I had. From the complex writing to the emotional voice acting to the deep storylines to even the soundtrack, this show takes full advantage of the medium to convey every emotion that anime has to offer. But what truly makes this experience outstanding is just how long it's able to keep this up. Every single new arc or new character adds to the core emotions of the series. All of this not only helped me to better understand my own emotions, but also helped me better understand the emotions of the people around me. So on top of being one of the best stories ever told in anime, it also helped me be a more compassionate person. So it's understandable that I rated this highly. But as great as March Comes In Like a Lion is, there's one other anime released in the 2010s that surpasses even that. So without further ado, my favorite anime of the 2010s is... Kizuna Ai! Being one of the most influential of all time, Kizuna Ai is such a good anime, it's not only going to change how we view anime, but the entire world as we know it. Okay, that was obviously a joke. While VTubers are great, they're not really anime? And moreover, what truly deserves anime of the decade is a series that fully understands what makes anime great and is able to incorporate it all into one series. So for real this time. Number 1. Stein's Gate Throughout this entire list, I think I've done a pretty good job with explaining why anime is so cool and why I like it so much. For example, anime early on in this list started by doing one thing great, then as it kept going, the show started to get more complex and incorporate more of the things I like in a show. This all comes together into one perfect anime, Steins Gate, that has everything that makes anime great. Rewatching the series not too long ago brought me back to 2008, when I first started seriously getting into anime, and reminded me why I love this medium so much and why I'm so passionate about discussing it. So by making this huge list, I not only already talked about the many elements that make Steins Gate great, but also what makes anime so great in general. So by being the perfect example of everything I love in anime, Steins Gate easily makes it to the top of this list. And that is it. Throughout 10 years of lists ending in the longest thing I have ever written, I have finally talked about anime of the 2010s in as much depth as I'm physically capable of. And what I learned in making it is that I love anime too much to try to boil it down to a list like this. So while this might be the end of proper anime countdowns, I will of course continue to watch and talk about the anime I love. I just want to do such in a way that better communicates the passion I have for the medium and every single show I watch. Because at the end of the day, I just want to be able to fully enjoy everything that I do. And I hope you all do the same. Whether it's anime, video games, or just life in general, I hope you fully appreciate each and every moment. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!